It was 11 in the evening. A thin teenage boy named Popoy was in a small bedroom without any fan. He was sweating. He was trying to be comfortable in a wooden bed without a mattress while reviewing for a quiz the following day. And then his mother, who just finished the laundry, with back still aching, slowly entered the room and tapped him on his shoulder. Popoy, oh is it okay if you don't take the upcat anymore? Because even if you pass the exam, we don't have money for you to study there. It was a moment of silence. Popoy was caught off guard. The University of the Philippines was his dream school. All of his classmates and teachers are all looking at him to ace it. Hopeful, he tried to ask his mother. Maybe he could still take the exam so he could give pride to his school. But he assured his mother that he would not push through because they don't have money for him to study there. He thought to himself, maybe he could find a job first or study elsewhere. The broken-hearted Popoy almost gave up on his dream university. The excitement to become the first UP graduate from their, U from their family suddenly disappeared. The aspiration to dream big was gone. And it was like surrendering, as if nothing could be done. It was one of those days when Popoy questioned himself. Why was I born poor? I met Popoy and his mother years ago. They were living in an extended family setup. Uh, the family of his uncle and aunt, a grandmother, a cousin. They were a total of eight in a 75 square meter house. And his mother, she would tire herself doing all the household chores just to get financial support in return. Despite having the agreement with his mother, Popoy would secretly go to a nearby computer shop, researching for all available scholarships. It was always a long list of requirements, but he could not complain because he needed it. And when he had clear options of all the available scholarships and the exam results were out, he excitedly told his mom, Ma, I could study in UP now. I was able to find a way. His mother was in full support to finish all the requirements for scholarships. And do you know what's the most tedious one? It's that document just to prove that you were poor. First, you have to go to a barangay to get this certificate. And then you need to get a notarized affidavit before you could go to this local government office, queue there, and finally get that piece of document just to prove that you were poor. Imagine, you were already lacking resources, but you still needed to spend some money just to complete those documents just to prove that you were poor. Eventually, Popoy was able to get into his dream university and got the scholarships he applied for. However, life continued to challenge him. He was trying to survive with 70 peso daily allowance, 50 pesos for fare, and then 20 pesos for meals and photocopying lesson handouts. The scholarship allowance was not enough and it normally arrived late. He needed to find a way to earn extra money that can support other school projects and activities. During his free time on weekdays and weekends, he was a tutor for some elementary and high school students. 
He needed to make sure that he was able to juggle his time properly so he could maintain his scholarships. It felt like a very long journey for Popoy, but it's his hard work and perseverance that allowed him to graduate from the university with flying colors. Popoy's story has always inspired me as a teacher. That's why I kept sharing this story to my students. For sure, it's not going to be the same story as, uh, for them, but it's the unwavering desire of Popoy to reach his dreams that also empowered my students. I was teaching almost 200 students from the junior high year 2016. I was teaching almost five sections of the first batch of grade 11 students when K-12 was first implemented in the Philippines. I've met the students who were always excited to answer the most complicated math problems. I also met those students who were more interested in performing, singing, dancing, drawing, or even cooking. Indeed, you cannot expect everyone to be academically inclined. And so with that, how could I impart something to my students? I just made sure that they were able to understand the fundamentals of our math lessons. But beyond that, I believe that empowering them is more impactful so they could become better version of themselves. Being a teacher is not an easy job. It was tiring but fulfilling. Until one day, I got a phone call and it was a job offer from the corporate world. That was the signal for me to leave the school. I needed to leave my students. It was a bittersweet experience. Then fast forward to year 2020 with pandemic still ongoing. I am one of those who is also thinking of something to do outside the normal routine during the pandemic. And back then, TikTok was booming as a social media platform. And I am also one of those who told themselves, no, I won't create TikTok account. I could not see myself dancing nor creating comedic skits. But through other content creators, I was able to recognize the potential of the platform to share knowledge. And I would admit, I also miss the feeling of teaching students. I miss my students sometimes annoying me with their most obvious questions. Okay, class, get one fourth sheet of paper. <laughs> Sir, one fourth? <laughs> Can we use one half? And so, I created my first ever TikTok math video from the four corners of a classroom to the four corners of a mobile screen. The power to share knowledge became limitless. And beyond math videos, we also started creating videos about scholarship applications, college entrance test examinations, we even created a podcast that talks about careers for students. We also created a podcast that talks about student and education relevant topics. All with the intent to reach other popoys who are eager to learn, eager to find resources, and eager to reach his dreams. And from time to time, I would receive messages from students giving me thanks because they were able to understand their math lesson from my less than three minute TikTok math video, giving me thanks because they were able to pass their scholarship and college entrance examinations, giving me thanks because they were motivated to finish their study and they are now licensed professionals. Being able to reach a number of students from 200 to 200,000 and counting. This is a proof 
that actions with good intentions will reach the right audience. And also to share with you, this year, we have started monetizing some of our math videos through another platform, which is YouTube, with the intent of getting a part of the proceeds to be donated for some students who are in need. And we are proud to share that as of the moment, we already have three students that we committed to support their studies in the next four years. All of these efforts coming together from the math videos to help the numeracy of our Filipino learners, the videos about scholarships, career discussions, and test examinations, to promote and enable responsible information dissemination, and to contributing to resources for those who are in need. Allow me to share with you this passion project of mine I named Tara Aral Pilipinas. What we have started are just initial steps with the hope for it to become even bigger. We envision reaching more students especially the ones in the far-flung areas, so they could also be informed about the bigger opportunities. We also dream of creating a scholarship mobile application that could centralize all the information about scholarships and that could simplify the process of application. Imagine, in a tap, you could bridge the hands of those who want to help and those who are in need. We also wish to contribute putting more schools and maybe additional technical and vocational education center so that we could also cater to more students who are more interested in practical knowledge versus the theory-based learnings. I believe that this passion project can now go beyond po other popoys along the way. It becomes more relevant nowadays that we are facing challenges in our Philippine education system. And beyond the boundaries of Philippines, I believe that it can also contribute to United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number four. Ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. If you feel like you are trapped in a life that you didn't want, then this story is for you. I want all of us to be reminded of how Popoy charted his own ways to reach his dreams, eventually becoming a breakthrough himself. I want all of us to be reminded of how the story of Popoy created that impact to Sir JP, myself as a teacher, to also empower other students and becoming a breakthrough for others. My dear friends, this story that I have shared today is not just about a story of a student named Popoy and Sir JP, myself as a teacher. This story is deeply rooted from my first hand experience as a student. My name. It's John Paul Penolyar, and my friends call me Popoy. I am Popoy, who was raised by a single mother and who needed to withstand my fair share of struggles as a student. I am Popoy, who created my own ways to reach my dreams. And I am Popoy, who
who became Sir JP with the hope to inspire and empower more Filipino students. And this journey is my way of giving back. Allow me to end this by saying, life is like math. We will always face different kinds of problems to solve, but certainly there are multiple ways to solve it. You can solve it using the long method solution. You can do the shortcut, but also remember, that you can also make your own unique solution even others could not understand sometimes. You do you. Never allow any barriers to stop you to become the best version of yourself, to become the breakthrough yourself. And when the right time comes, the significance of yourself being a breakthrough starts when you become a breakthrough for others. Thank you for listening. Mabuhay ang kapatang Pilipino.